So guys, here I am to speak a little bit about lithium batteries in your golf cart. Um, I want to try to tell you what I know about lithium batteries. I don't have a really strong opinion for them nor against them, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. I do remember, I don't know that you guys ever had a T-Rex helicopter or a Piccolo helicopter or one of those little hobby-grade helicopters that came out like... Man, I guess it was like 2000s when they start kind of picking up. And so I had some of those as a kid, as a teenager. And so um, they, I, I love those. My dad bought like, I don't know, more than, he might have bought like 40 of those. Like he bought so many of them. He just loved to tinker. But they had NICAD or nickel metal hydride batteries. And they really were not very usable. And then lithium technology came out for those model helicopters and it was a game changer so anyway today is not helicopters but a easy go rxv golf cart it's a 48 volt system the the easy go rxv i just want you to guys to understand that this is an ac golf cart which basically means the motor is ac it does not use dc it doesn't use direct current it uses like ac current that comes out of your wall outlet in your house like that's the type of power it uses that's the wave form of the power and so ac power is more efficient than dc power it's, it uses a brushless motor to accomplish this and so it's much faster it's more efficient um, anytime you have a commutator and brushes you have friction and you have loss of power as it as the sine wave collapses and changes whereas uh, if you have a very high frequency speed controller, you can get more efficiency and more runtime with a DC cart like a RXV. Now, a lot of the RXVs have brake issues, so it doesn't have mechanical brakes. It has like an electric brake on it. This electric brake is attached to the rear of the engine and it locks the engine. This is very convenient when you're playing golf on the golf course you don't have to always lock a parking brake it automatically locks it electronically so the rest of the braking is accomplished by regenerative braking through the motor when you're just normally driving that's how it's braking is through regenerative braking so anyway we're not here to discuss that let's get straight on to the lithium batteries this is a three battery setup here now i want you to know that you can actually install just two batteries each one of these batteries is 48 volts. So that's what you have to keep in mind. It's just amazing that we can pack 48 volts into uh, a battery that small. And so um, before I get into that, I wanna show you this. So when you buy a lithium battery, it comes in this cool box here. Like when you buy a normal eight volt T105, or I think T105 is a six volt battery. When you buy a T105 or any other Trojan batteries, they don't come in boxes, but look at this. You actually get a box here, and it actually has some helpful specs here. And so I want to, I want you to really pay attention to two of these specs right here. First is the weight. It's 37 pounds or 16.8 kilograms. Okay, so an 8-volt battery and a 6-volt battery, lead-acid battery, is 62 pounds for... A six volt battery and 63 pounds for an eight volt battery so um really this is almost almost half the weight now and then another number you look at is 30 amp hours so that's the number i'm a little concerned about right here because if you look at a normal i don't know if i have one in front of me but they a normal lead acid battery is like around 135 125 amp hours this is only 30 but the cool thing is, is when you install them in a cart, you install them with them connected in what they call parallel. Parallel basically means instead of negative going to positive and positive going to negative, negative goes to negative and negative goes to negative. So this is negative, goes to negative, and then you have a wire that goes also to negative. And then so here's positive, positive flows to positive, and then from positive we go to positive. Definitely don't want to cross any of these. Each battery provides 48 volts, and then when you connect them in parallel, the voltage stays 48, but the amp hours is what doubles. So it's 38 amp hours for each battery. So with three batteries, you'll have 90 amp hours. Uh, you can again, I said earlier, you can use only two of these batteries, and you'll have 60 amp hours. The only difference is, is you'll have more runtime, and it may. What I'm a little concerned about is how well does it climb a hill? Like if you're if you're going up a prolonged hill, you have more current draw, and I don't know exactly that. That's what I'm really trying to test. It, will these batteries be able to sustain that amp draw? So the reason I asked that question is because these batteries do have an overcurrent protection in them. So if there's too much current flowing out of the batteries, they will switch off. 
Now, notice how I use the word switch off. Let me switch over to this side because I want you to see something that's pretty unique to a lithium battery that lead acid batteries do not have. So, this is the Trojan. There's lots of other brands out here, but I'm using Trojan because it's probably going to be the, the mainstream battery you're going to see from the OEM manufacturer. So, right here you have a little on and off switch. If you just tap this switch, let's see if I can get a little closer so you can see. You can see it says battery status, and I'm just going to tap it. You just tap it like one time. All four of those blue lights means that the battery is fully charged. And then the green check mark over here means that the battery status is fine. So this, this is a brand new battery I put in. It's reading fine. Um, the same with this one. Let's see what it reads. These, are, these two batteries here are like two or three years old. So let's see here what this one is. That one's reading fully charged and fine. And you just press it once. You just... Press it once, that's what I'm doing. Let's do it over here again. That one there red, fine too. See, it's hard to see with the wire cable, but I'm trying, I want you to know that you that the way I'm pressing this matters. I'm just pressing it quickly. And the reason I say that is because if you take your finger and hold this down, which is what we're gonna do, just hold it down. The okay light goes off, the red light comes on, and then all of the blue lights go off. I literally just turn the battery off. That's the cool thing about these lithium batteries. You can turn them off. And then we can reverse that procedure. Just hold the button down. All the lights illuminate. And once they all illuminate, you can let go. And this battery is back on. Huh, that's kind of weird. This not reading correctly. So that's, that's what I'm getting to. That is really odd. Huh. Let me power this one off again. Okay, now let me power it back on. It literally shut back off. Beginning to wonder whether there's something wrong with this particular battery. Again, this is sort of why I'm have I'm, I'm a little ambivalent about whether this battery, these batteries are the way to go, because it seems like this battery may have failed. It's only two years old, so let me see what this one does. That one's doing the same thing. Look at that. Look at it. Does not seem like it fully charged. I'm not really sure because they were all in charge. Now it has three aluminum. This is the confusing process with these here. You can turn them off. But it seems like it's not fully charging. Not that, I'm wondering whether that's the problem we're having. So anyway, this is the brand new battery. Let's see what it does. We'll turn it off as well. Let's just go all the way off with it. And we'll press it again. You press it again, you see that all of the lights illumine on it. Now we'll Hold it down, let it turn back on. Okay, so now it's on. And you can see all of them illumin. These are not. And it shows that they're not really fully charging. It seems like those are not fully charging. So anyway, the symptom that we were having with this car is when you pull a heel, it would just shut off suddenly. And I think it was because of low current. But even with that new battery in there, it still does it. So I'm a little confused. So anyway, I want you to notice something else on this battery here. There's a COM port. It says COM, COM2 and COM1. And same way here, COM2, COM1. You can see it better here. Communication port 1, communication port two so when you connect these batteries they like they have to communicate with one another and so you can see i ran com one over here to com one and then com two goes over here to com two i don't think it really matters you can put con two on com one that's I, I tried to find that information and no one seemed to be able to tell you but i saw somewhere they said it doesn't really matter so if you have just two batteries you would just do com one to com one that's it if you have three batteries you use that com and goes over to COM2. This leftover COM, I saw some, I saw Trojan saying that there's a, um, there's a terminal 
that you're supposed to put on here to terminate the connection. And I'm trying to figure out where do you get that. That's this is why this is what I'm trying to discuss about lithium batteries. There's literally they call it a, a terminal that goes on here that terminates this COM1. Otherwise, like if you buy these batteries, you can get them in a kit and it will come with a, let's see, I'll move over here and show you. It'll come with a battery indicator gauge. This is this is just a uh, lead acid battery indicator gauge, but they do have a special one. I'll, I'll try to give you that part number because I looked everywhere trying to find a part number to that and I could not find it. Um, but anyway, if you had that gauge, it would plug into this last free cum port because you're going to always wind up with one of them free unless you if you have an odd number of batteries so anyway um that's how to connect these again i want to make it really really clear that you always go negative to negative to negative you go positive to positive to positive and then the speed controller like where you want to draw the power from the from the batteries you want to in this case, since I have three batteries, you need to draw it from the center battery. That way, you always have the shortest connection. For example, if I draw it from this battery over here on the far right, then in order for this battery to get power over here, it has to go through two connections. So that's the longer the connection, the more heat that you will encounter. And so you want to reduce the length of the wire and so that's why I suggest connecting it to the center battery that way this battery only has that distance to travel and this battery only has that distance to travel so and then the center battery has zero distance to travel so um, that's the best way to do it put it in the center if you only have two batteries then it doesn't even matter um, if you have more I think you can go up to four I think you could I saw somewhere everybody said that you can literally connect up to ten of these batteries together um, obviously you don't have the space in here to do that but um if you were using them for another application, I saw up to 10. So, um, yeah, I think the biggest difference here that you notice right off is we're talking about half the weight. I saw significant weight improvement there, and that gives you longer run time because you're just literally carrying less of a load. Um, I think being zero maintenance is also a huge benefit. There's no reason to add water. There's not the adding water is not even a possibility. And Trojan says that you can even rinse these batteries lightly. They can get wet. They can get submerged. Now they do not recommend them getting wet or submerged. But I think that if they get wet, I don't think you need to be concerned that they will catch fire. They literally have a computer in them that is made to detect a variety of different things. Like I said, overcurrent is something that they that they check so i guess if these if you use them in the wrong application and you're just pulling way too much power they will automatically shut off um they have temperature compensation they have a variety of other things i'd have to go and look and see but um yeah i, I think i i want to this charger i have here may not be working but i am concerned that these batteries are only two years old and it appears as though they have already begun to fail they're not fully charging because i literally had this thing on the charge all night and it's saying when you come over here let's see it's saying that that battery is not fully charged you know it's like 80 percent or something so um both of those are doing that and that's a little concern i don't know um so they have age compensation in them too so as the battery ages it gets weaker and this gauge is supposed to reflect that as well. So I don't know what's going on. I got to figure that out. But um, should you go to a lithium? So I'll tell you what I paid for these batteries. My cost on these batteries, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but my cost on these batteries are like $704. If you go and buy them retail, you're probably going to be paying about $800 for them. I saw some dealers selling them for $850. My cost is like $702. And I'm not even getting them at complete wholesale either so there's i suspect wholesale price on them is probably around 650 that's so anyway if you're shopping around for these batteries you probably won't find them for less than 650 600 um i was able to get them for about right at 700 um i think full retail is around 790 or maybe 800 so um with the two battery setup you can get away with about 1400 dollars fifteen hundred dollars you do have to buy this com cable and it's like thirty five dollars for each one of these com cables um and you do need those so factor in that cost for each com cable 
you do have to change the charger which is i got to pull this charger out this the customer told me that this was a lithium certified charger i'm not so sure it is that maybe while we're having battery issues i think this charger is supposed to be green uh, to represent lithium and not black so i gotta check into that i'm not sure when i say black it's supposed to have you see how the label is black on here the front label i gotta check into that and i gotta pull it out of here to see he told me specifically that it was a lithium charger but anyway that's my opinion on these. Should you go with them? I mean, I'm just telling you, it's really nice to not have all that weight. If the card is disabled, it's easier to push. It's lighter on your turf. It's it's going to climb heels better because it's lugging less weight. And there's no maintenance required. You want to keep these batteries fully charged. I think they're designed to be drained about 70%. So below, after when there's only a residual power of 30 percent they automatically shut off that they will not allow you to drain them entirely so um but they're rated to be they're rated to drain 70 percent four thousand times so that's the life cycle four thousand times being drained 70 percent which really sounds crazy because that's that's shocking i, I just don't i don't know that they give it they give that kind of um rating but I, that is really crazy like four thousand cycles down to 30 percent is really crazy if it can really survive that then i would recommend them but only time will tell whether that's really what you can get and then they say they should last eight years now i use crown and sometimes i'll use trojan uh, lead acid batteries i have never seen a crown or uh, or, or trojan lead acid battery fail before four years four years is the minimum amount of time i've seen any of those batteries fail which you know like the trojan lead acid batteries have a two-year 24 month free replacement warranty um i don't know it's prorated i think it's it may be i think it's a full year and then it may be prorated up to 24 months i'm not sure but they'll just say if you see it it'll say 24 month warranty I, I, the fine print i'm not sure so anyway they say that because a lead acid battery like of this nature will never fail before two years even if it even if the sales get dry and all that and you drain it you and within two years you can still rejuvenate that pro that battery i use a desulfating charger and a desulfating process and so far on both a trojan and a crown battery if it's under two years i've always been able to rejuvenate that battery now the battery will not be a hundred percent of the capacity but it will probably be able to be given back to the customer and the customer he may notice um he may not finish all of his golf holes but the warranty is going to say, okay, the, the golf cart is drivable. It, it was able to drive a thousand feet, so they're not going to give you another battery. So, um, beyond, but it's like four years is like the minimum amount of time. I really have never even seen a lead asset battery fail within four years unless it was a Napa battery, a Duracell battery, Interstate battery, and a lot of these other cheaper brand batteries. So, those will fail sometimes at four year mark. Um, but a Trojan and a Crown, and I think Crown is actually a little ha a hair better. Now, Trojan used to be the best, but some investors came in, bought them out, made the lead plate smaller, and I literally had a lot of those catching fire. I want to walk out here and show you a lot of these Trojan batteries that caught fire, but I think they have corrected that problem. But I'll still say that a Crown battery, in fact, let, let me let me see if I can do this, guys. I hate to, like, interrupt. Let's, we're going to walk out here. I don't want you to see the mess at this shop here, but we're literally going to walk out here. I'm going to show you all these junk batteries. I don't want to show you what's going on. So, you know, I'm not just making things up here. Uh, maybe I'm not going to find what I'm looking for. And anyway, look at this stack of batteries that we have over here. I got rid of most of the Trojans that caught fire because we, um, well, I'm trying to find one. I don't think I have a single one out here now, but, um, on the Trojan battery, this stud right here would break off, melt off. I'm shocked that I don't have one still left out here. Um, and these are the crowns. You can see the date code on that. It's a 2016 battery, so you can see the age. These, has not, these have not been here that long, so um, you can do the math. What is that? Four and four. It's eight years old, those batteries are. And some of these batteries were not even, like, completely bad. The customer just wanted optimum run time and so that's why we replaced it um but i did have like 10 of these trojan batteries where this terminal had broken off it had melted off um so 
I don't have any out here now because I took a bunch of them, hauled them off. But you can see all these batteries that I have replaced. This is not all of them by no means. These are just the ones that are still left over. So, um, yeah. Um, but these 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 would melt off, and that's why it's so important to keep those terminals clean. You can put some corrosion deterrent on there, and that that really helps. But you really want to keep those terminals shiny and clean. And, and and what I do is when I, I'll take my golf cart and I will put it under a load. I'll drive it up a hill and and then feel the wires. If the wires are getting warm, if they're just slightly warm, maybe okay. But if they're hot to touch, that's bad. You do not, they're never supposed to be hot. So I'm walking back through this shop, guys. You can see my mess here. I'm trying to be a little discreet with people's is equipment. But, um, but if the wires are hot, you need to replace the wires. You may be able to cut if you have a crimping tool. Sometimes you can cut the terminal off, shave back a little bit more, get another connection, put a new terminal. Sometimes that's all you have to do. But otherwise, those wires have a life to them where they start internally corroding and the resistance and friction will build up more with the electron flow. And so they'll, the whole wire will start heating up like the toaster wire and that will cause it to melt off the terminal as well. So um, the Trojan batteries, Trojan lead acid batteries, tend to leak a little bit more lead i'm sorry a little bit more acid over the surface of the battery and it may drip on your garage floor crown batteries tend to be better sealed and so that's why i still prefer crown over trojan over a period of time you will notice that trojans will build much more corrosion on the terminals and obviously these lithium batteries don't do that but um if they were lead acid batteries they would they would sweat and you know every time you charge those batteries there's hydrochloric the vapors that are released into the air and they're corrosive and it just starts corroding the terminals i think it primarily goes after the positive because i think power always flows from positive to negative if i remember correctly i'm trying to remember my electron flow but anyway one of the terminals tends to get a lot more than the other i think it's positive if i remember correctly just be, be just because of the way the air is charged and the way electrons tend to flow so um anyway crowns tend to develop less of that and since they have less of that they tend that when you start getting all that corrosion on the terminals that creates resistance and when you start getting resistance that creates heat and when you get too much heat it'll melt the terminal so crown batteries tend to do that less and i think that improves the reliability of them and so that's why i prefer crown over trojan so far again trojan has been making revamping some of their technology and making it a little better than what it was like if you go back about 10 years trojan batteries were like some of the best batteries i saw some of those last up to 10 years but since 10 years ago i haven't seen a trojan battery last 10 years they usually i'll tell people that you're going to get a minimum of four years you're going to usually get about six years and if you're really nice to your batteries keep them fully charged and you maintain them it's possible to get about eight years so all that to say these lithium batteries that are somewhat i don't know i don't think they guarantee them to eight years but that's kind of like what you should expect the government even on like lithium powered cars i think there's a government mandate that says they must last 150,000 miles or eight years i think that's the government mandate for i think nearly every electric car and so um the problem with making a guarantee like that is the battery still loses capacity. It's not like the battery still has 100% of its capacity straight up to eight years. You lose capacity every year, and I don't know what that percentage is. It's left to be seen on these golf carts. This is what's concerning me. This battery is not reading full capacity after being on charge, and so there may be a charger issue. i got to go through that to see, but... We're having some lithium problems. We're having some battery problems, some electrical flow issues because the cart, when you pull a heel, will just suddenly stop. It won't stop unless you're, you know, going full speed. And this is a really fast golf cart. This golf cart gets up to, man, this is one of the fastest golf carts. It gets up to, um, it's doing every bit of 25 miles an hour. It's, it's doing probably doing 28 on a level surface. So um, it's really fast. Um, Sometimes I believe it's about to touch 30. It, it's so fast. And when you're pulling that kind of speed, it's pulling a lot of power. So, And you only usually get that on the RXVs. Um, so you may be wondering, what in the world is going on over here with this 12-volt over here tucked in here? 
Now the customer, that was an appendage that he did. That's not something I would have done. But what he's doing is he's running accessories such as the lights. They, and I think it has a backup camera or something on it. Um, those accessories require only 12 volts. And since this is 48 volts, that's why he put that other battery in there. Now they make a 48 volt to 12 volt converter. And I'll just say this to all of you guys out there. I've seen so many of those converters fail. Almost all of them pull a residual amount of power, even when the key switch is off. Now, when you wire that converter up, there's a wire that disables the converter. It disconnects the converter from the circuitry. You're supposed to wire it into the key switch so that when you turn the key switch off, there's no power output from that converter. However, even with that, I've seen so many of them that still... They may pull about 50, I've seen someone pull up maybe 100 milliamps from the battery, even when the key is off. And if you leave your car in storage for maybe a month, you come back, the battery is completely dead. So you have to like shop around and make sure you get a high quality converter that doesn't pull any residual power. I also seen some of those catch fire. So anyway, for the time being, suffice it is just using a 12 volt battery we actually do have a converter that i'm going to try to put in here but before i put it in here i'm going to test it and make sure it's not pulling more than about i, I think my threshold is about 100 milliamps 200 milliamps if it's pulling more than that i wouldn't know if it's pulling a whole amp it's never has absolutely no no i would say 50 milliamps is kind of where ideally you're going to see it's all of them generally pull a little bit even when the key is off even when it's wired correctly um, but you just do not want to be severely draining a lithium battery. That is not something they like. They, lithium batteries are really happy stand above 50%. On your phone, some people would say don't charge it above 80%. Like some of the new Samsung phones literally have a feature to where it will only charge up to 80% because trying to charge it above that will reduce the life and then draining it below and in this case, 30%, but I would say draining it below 40 or 50% is still not so great. So even on my phone, I do fully charge my phone because I'm just a fanatic like that, but I never discharge my phone below about 50%. I always keep it on charge if it goes above the, below that. So keeping these batteries charged as much as possible is something that they will enjoy that will increase your battery life. So... Uh, let's go back over here for a minute. Um, I'm, I want you to look at this box here. So when you buy, I want you to look at what was in this box. When you buy lithium batteries, they this is that gauge I was telling you about. You get that nice fancy gauge. Isn't that beautiful? Like a green. I think it actually can turn blue too. They tell you that this gauge is compatible with, you know, the GC2 series lithium batteries, but then they don't even give you the part number. Um, I think I have the part number on the computer. I'm going to go over there and check. And so they tell you you need all these tools to install. Knock yourself out if you want to do all that. I didn't use all those tools. But, uh, you know, for the sake of liability, I'm going to tell you to stick to what they tell you. And so uh, I'm just showing you what this little pamphlet says that they give you with the battery. Um, there's further instructions on the rear. Um, this is just... You can see it's telling you parallel connections versus how to connect them. You know, how they just fail to mention anything about how to connect the COM on these, though. So it's telling you don't connect them in series. And then these are the instructions right here. Man, these are the instructions that tell you what I was trying to do. Turn it on, press and haul. LEDs will successively turn on from left to right. Once all LEDs are on, wait one to two seconds and then release the button and then turning it off. Same thing, wait one to two seconds. And I did that. Just, uh, I'll try it again. Maybe I didn't wait a full two seconds. But anyway, um, we're only getting three of those LEDs, which is showing that they're only at 75% capacity max. Um, and so that's what that says. And then just showing you what they say here. Um, yeah, so this is the quick start guide that accompanies the battery. And so this is the box it came in. I'm just showing you these specs here again. The dimensions, we can get that glare out. The weight, and then these are the 30 amp, amp hour batteries. So, um, yeah, the GC2. So anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Um, should you go to lithium? I mean, if you got money to waste, yeah, go with it. You got money to, I mean, I would, 
the reason this guy went with lithium batteries, and I would say this may be a really good reason to switch over, this may be the only reason, is he's gone a long time. Like he says, I only use this golf cart one or two times a year. I'm traveling a lot, and when I come there on the weekends, I want to be able to use my cart. And every time those lead acid batteries are like dead or something's going on, and all the maintenance, adding water. But this requires no maintenance, and so the cart is always ready to go when he comes. So I would say that's probably the single greatest advantage the lithium batteries have is no, no uh, maintenance. If you get a trickle charge, it's ready to go. You're good to go, particularly if you, like, in this case, I think this is this guy's second home. And so, um, coming on July 4th, coming from Memorial Day, coming down on Christmas, we're going to come down on Thanksgiving, I got the kids with me. No, we haven't been to this house in like two months, and so we want everything to work and be ready to go. We don't want to be like dealing with dead batteries or dried up batteries, and, and they, the water is gone from them. Like, lead, lithium batteries... They shine in regard to lack of maintenance. So I would say that may be a reason you should switch over. Man, $800 per battery. That's a lot of change. That's an entire battery replacement for a little for, um Sorry, I just now kicked this box. Um, that's an entire battery replacement on both the 8 volts and the 6 volt batteries. So it's just a lot of money. You know, it's a lot of money. But, you know, it's a pretty cart. I think lithium, what a lot of these carts are moving to, whether it's going to be a sustainable technology, I don't really know yet. I don't know. I, just, I can't really offer much more opinions based off of anything else. I'm just trying to give you the facts and you can make your mind up. If, you got, if you're just rolling in dough, go with it. If you're not, stick with lithium. For, stick with lead acid for now. I don't think the technology is quite mature enough yet. So stay tuned for more.